Hi everybody, welcome to Cinder Wines. Joe Schnur here, along with my wonderful wife and our winemaker, Melanie Krause. And we're doing a little special video for people that are enjoying the take home, tasting at home kit that we put together for you. So this is spring 2020. These are the new wines. Are we gonna, what are we gonna do today? Are we gonna drink all these wines? We're not gonna taste them all oh, because God. it's only 10 o'clock in the morning. That would be, <laughs> that would be a lot of wines. That'd be seven wines and I, seven, seven wines at 10 a.m. I mean, that reminds me of my altar boy days. Oh yeah, I mean, really, that's great, Joe. That would have been ridiculous. Um, so what we are gonna do is focus on Malbec and Barbera since those are relatively new. Okay. But I would just like to say about the whites, those are all from the 2020 vintage and it was a wonderful vintage. I, that may come as a surprise considering how hard of a year it was yeah. for the human community. In the vineyards, Mother Nature was easy on us. She gave us a nice crop. It wasn't too big, it wasn't too small. She gave us lots of sunshine in the summer. No weird storm events or anything like that. So we have for 2020, a totally beautiful, great vintage. The Goldilocks, and it's a Goldilocks vintage. It was, yeah, which is amazing, but it really helped to balance out the chaos that COVID um, caused in our lives. And so, we're having the Viognier right now, mm -hmm. um, just sipping and relaxing. And, and we laid the bottles out and you've got a lot of the little cute mini bottles at home in your tasting kit. We've laid them out in your view, left to right, in, in sort of the order we recommend, right? Yeah, this would be a good order to taste them in. Rose. In case you're noticing that mm -hmm. you only have six bottles and there's seven wines oh, yeah. here, that's because we did not bottle the Riesling. We don't put the Riesling in keg because it does have that slight amount of residual sugar in it. So if we put it in a keg and then when we tap the keg, some amount of yeast always get introduced into the keg and it starts to re-ferment, which is a problem. We don't want kegs so. exploding in our winery. You don't want that either. Uh, but we, you do have all the other six wines in the kit. Mm -hmm. And when you're ready, come on in, taste the Riesling or just, of course, buy tons of it. We'll let you do that. As Trust well. me that it's delicious. Yeah. So tart, just a little bit of sweetness. The balance is like mother nature's sweet tart candy in your mouth. So pairs with all sorts of awesome, yummy food. Now I am, we are enjoying the Viognier right now before we get into the reds. You guys go ahead, uh, pop the wines, pour them out. Hopefully you've got some friends there you're tasting with. We'll, uh, after the Viognier, we'll go into our focus, which will be, wait, let me get it right, the Malbec and the Barbera, which is our small lot series creation. But right now I'm just enjoying the Viognier, the queen of the white wines here in the Snake River Valley. I like to call it that. Um, this is the wine that brought you back to Idaho, right? Yes, I think that we grow it exceptionally well here. And I noticed that when I was working at Chateau St. Michel in Washington, I was spying on the Boise uh, wineries, all 10 of them or so back then. Yeah. And thinking to myself, ooh, that Viognier is amazing. Maybe it would be worth moving back to my hometown to, and starting a winery there. So mm. that is kind of what brought me back to Boise. And um, yeah, I haven't regretted that decision Hey, since, cheers so. to 2020. How about <laughs> cheers to the vintage and also cheers to the year being over. Yeah. Okay, cheers. Thanks. Uh, thanks for coming along on the ride with us here today. Okay, now I'm going to pour you the... All right, that's a beautiful wine. Nice job. Nice I'm going to pour you the Malbec first Malbec. here, Joe. And Malbec's going to be fun to talk to uh, to everyone about because this kind of got, got a short a changed. overshadowed yeah. in the chaos of last spring. I don't know if, you know, people remember trying it. That was a really scary time last March. So we're going to talk about it again today. Just Hold in case on, everybody's first off, can we talk about, out of Can we memory. talk about, before you pour that, can you put the cap back on that? just want to say... Oh my God, so cute, these little baby bottles. <laughs> yes. Right? Oh my, I just want to take the baby out. You're going to be okay. <laughs> it's going to be okay. 2020 is over. You're going to be, sorry, I just had to do that. We love these bottles. Who else loves these bottles in our family? Oh, well, my daughter loves to take them once they're empty and make potions out of them. That's so. right. Watch out if for that. If you have little kids, watch out. They're going to yep. want to snag these. Okay, so we'll taste the Malbec first and then the Barbera. Great. And Malbec didn't get a lot of attention. And the reason we really want to kind of try to push the pause button and talk about it a little bit today is the Malbec is really going to be a new um, part of our regular portfolio and family. Um, yeah. And we're going to be seeing this every spring, right? Yes. Yeah, so we have been working with Malbec in small amounts. A lot of you realize uh, for a while it's been blended into our Valentina, but we have enough um, 
our growers liked it enough and we liked it enough that we we have enough to make a single variety now and that will become part of our permanent lineup here at cinder mm. um, it's a great wine our growers love it because it's hearty it makes it through our occasionally difficult winters here in idaho and it also loves our relatively harsh environment uh, malbec is a vigorous vine it needs to be tamed a little bit and so being in high elevation lots of heat and very little water in the summer is all good to keep malbec reined in ah. so that it produces high quality wine because if it gets anything it wants it grows like crazy and the wine starts to taste kind of weak so familiar a kind of a familiar sounding story to me um, when it comes to the viticulture aspect of malbec um, to the Tempranillo. We love mm -hmm. Tempranillo. It does it particularly well in this climate. Um, and uh, and so does, so does Malbec. It likes sort of this, this harsh style, but wow, totally different uh, end result. This is not, this, that's where the similarities kind of end, isn't it? Between Tempranillo and Malbec. Uh, they're both perfect for this region, but man, when I bring it up to my nose, this is not a cinder. Tempranillo, is it? Yeah, very different fruit characteristics. Um, Malbec is so exuberant that might be, you know, it's just, it's just so aromatic. That's one of the reasons why we use it in our Valentina is to kind of lift the aromas, but it's so expressive that it could overwhelm mm -hmm. those other Bordeaux varieties like Merlot and Cab. So you'll notice we always kind of keep it at 15% or below. And that's the reason, but it's really fun to try it all by itself to realize what a bombastic wine this is. And this is big. Yeah. This I, is big and gorgeous. And I'm getting, and I'm getting red fruit. I'm getting, I'm just super lively, nice uh, structure, good tannins. Now, mm -hmm. we definitely recommend when you go ahead and, and open that full uh, bottle, we're, we, we say decant this with within the first um, certainly six months if not up to two years get some oxygen in this wine this is a big mm -hmm. red wine you've made a nicely balanced red wine but man it's really improved by a little decanting isn't it yes because that'll help to kind of soften up those tannins which are a little bit edgy right now just upon release but mm -hmm. they'll soften with age if you have the patience or with a decanting that'll help a little bit too I'm getting, I'm getting some spice in here. I'm already, sorry to interrupt, I'm already thinking about what to eat with this though. What are you, what are you thinking? Well, I was just gonna say, yeah, this, go is, this is a wine that's so fruity that for me, I like to drink my dessert. I like to have my glass of red wine mm. as my dessert and Syrah is kind of my favorite thing for that. So I'm just gonna um, put Malbec there in my dessert <laughs> red wine category, not because it has any sugar in it, but that's what I like to do after dinner is have a glass of a dry red wine. And she is the I like them to be fruity and I eight. like them to be big. So mm -hmm. that's Malbec's gonna fall into that category for me. As far as pairing, you know, prime anything. Rib, prime yeah, rib alert, prime any rib alert. Any of those delicious uh, meals that you would pair um, the Valentina or the Tempranillo or the Syrah with is gonna work for this, I think. I want something rich and fatty. I want the prime rib. I also am even thinking about a little bit of a decadent cheese, maybe. For sure. Yeah, you know, this is a big. This is a big red wine. Yeah, and or whenever you do something that's cooked with fruit, like pork, like pork loin with a oh fruit yeah. concoction, something like that. So, um, tell me about uh, which growers did, are are hooking us up with this. They're doing a fabulous job. Give them a shout out. Yeah, sure. So this Malbec comes from Sawtooth and Emerald Slope. Uh, Sawtooth in Nampa and Emerald Slopes out in Adrian, Oregon. And we have Malbec just coming into fruition out in Melba at Roxburgh Vineyard. And mm -hmm. a few other people are planning it around the valley. So this is definitely going to be a, a variety that we're going to see more of and more different vineyard plantings, which is super cool because then we get to see how it performs in different sites, make our wines even better. So. You are a blender, right? So you love that when you get the same like grape blend. from different vineyards and you can see different, different uh, I would say uh, characteristics and such. They ma it makes a gorgeous red wine. Um, I'm gonna come back to that. I'm gonna drink a little bit more, but let's go over to our second red wine that we're gonna taste today. Again, we're not gonna be able to go through all the wines with you today, um, just cause you know, we'll be asleep. Um, <laughs> but we're on to the Barbera, right? Yeah. Now so Small Lot Series, just tell me, if you don't mind, just tell me what's the Small Lot Series about again? Just a good reminder. 
Well, this kind of exemplifies why we like the Small Lot Series. It's essentially a tool for everybody to explore, for me and my seller team to try out new wines or new styles and get to know them. And then, of course, our wine club members enjoy tasting those experiments as well, I believe. They enjoy that? I think so. They enjoy the experiments? I think so, yes. I, I definitely Of course, know we that. only bottle them for you if they're good, but we try not to have... Um, for experiments. You know, but who, you know one of our friends out there that's a club member, Kathy, she loves the uh, the exploration of the Small Hot Series, doesn't she? Mm, yes. I think she true. does. So this one, we're taking you via Washington, we're giving you a little view of Italy here. So um, mm. Melanie, you've got a, yeah. a, a wonderful start to your career in Washington. We have dear friends there, world-class winemaking and viticulture up there. You source these grapes, even though Cinder is really about the Snake River Valley, Small Hot Series gives you that opportunity to go to go explore even sometimes outside of our region. So you went to Washington for this. Yes, and this opportunity came up because it's the, the grapes are from Alder Ridge Vineyard, which is right on the Columbia River. And it's a vineyard that I have long history with. Yeah. I was a viticulture technician on that vineyard back when I started my career 20 years ago. So. And I've purchased uh, off of that vineyard when we've had our hard winters here and had to get a little supplementation. So I knew that they had this Barbera. I know the block. It's perched on a terrace hanging over the Columbia G River. Gorgeous. Yeah. Absolutely. Like the gorgeous. most gorgeous yeah. site you can imagine. And so, so I've been kind of, you know, digging at them like, <laughs> can you sell me some of that? And in this particular vintage, they had some on contract and I was able to pick it up. So. Here we go, Small Lot Series, um, Highlight of Barbera, a variety that I've never made before. Really? Nope. This is the first. Oh, you did a pretty good job. Thank you. But I'm really interested in it because in the world of red wines, it's unusual. It's unusual because it, it ripens well. It ripens a lot. There's quite a bit of alcohol in this wine um, in terms of its sugar, but it also maintains its acidity, which is a little bit unusual in red wines. We have a good example of that in white wines. That's our Riesling. It ripens, but it manages to maintain a whole bunch of acid. With now, this is the characteristic of this grape, no matter where it's grown. Yes. Riesling is known for having high acid levels. It and doesn't, so is Barbera. And so is, okay. in, in Italy, in Washington, wherever you grow it, this is an intrinsic trait of Barbera, and it, which is very is. exciting because it's unusual to find that in a red grape. Most of the time, as sugar increases and the fruit ripens, the acid decreases. But with Barbera, it manages to stay pretty steady. And so that's that's weird and unusual, and I like it. Yeah, And, and we this wanted is, to experiment with it, and so you're, here and, we go. And isn't this fun because you're an American winemaker, um, and, this re and you're in a hot region, and you've got this red wine, and but man, it won't lose its acid no matter what. And so this was kind of different for you, right? I mean, this is kind of what it would be like to make wine in Europe a little bit, right? Yeah, the a little bit. cooler climates over there in, in general. Well, and I have designs on this variety. Maybe oh. we can convince some of our growers to plant it, and then we have a, a blender that we could add to other blends that would bring the acidity up and the pH down. Very uh, nerdy, you know... Mm -hmm. Well, you're a blender. Mine, Melanie is a blender, right? <laughs> Melanie um, normally doesn't produce, let's say, single vineyard wines. You love blending from different sources, even different varieties. And so I could see you, it would be a nice, I'm sure you'd be happy to have a little bit of Barbera in, in the winery every year. You wouldn't complain yeah. about that, would you? Could be very interesting. All right. All right. Well, I'm loving it. It's definitely, it's popping out of the glass. Tell me about what you're smelling, what you're experiencing, and what you would, what you would, enjoy with this wine oh boy well you know it's um so different from most of the wines we make i think we'll love to get feedback from you guys as you find great pairings immediately yes. though i do think of really rich foods like cheeses that where the acid will act um to clean your palate after mm -hmm. you eat the really rich cheese but also things that are high in acid like tomato based dishes could yeah. be fun with we this are, well, we are so. this is an italian variety so yeah yeah, but someday we're gonna have to go to Italy, do a little research mm -hmm. on what exactly they they enjoy with. Or maybe barbera. just a meal that's like sausage bread and cheese. That would be awesome. Rustic. Yeah, I like that. This is fun. Um, I love I love the Barbera. I'm gonna bounce back to the Malbec. Really, two different experiences here. I'm going back to my my prime rib wine. 
Okay, well, we just want to thank you guys so much for all of your support, mm -hmm. and we hope you enjoy this release. We think it's amazing. We hope you do too. Come back and visit us when our patio is open, which we're soon. hoping to be soon. Yep. And we're hoping for a beautiful summer. So yeah. get and if you can, get your vaccination shot. Let's all get safe again and party. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, guys. <laughs>